Hello, my name is Arnold Filzer, and today I'll tell you about distributed construction of light networks. This is a joint work with Michael Elkin and Offer Neyman. The results we'll be presenting today are in the congested model of distributed computation. Here, we're given a network which is presented as a graph. In each vertex of the network, there is a server, and the goal is to compute some global function in this distributed fashion. So specifically, the computation will be done in synchronized rounds, and in each round, every pair of neighboring servers are allowed to exchange a logarithmic size message. So the parameters we'll care about are D, the hop diameter, which is a kind of the length of any path or number of hops you need to get from between any pair of vertices, and N, the total number of vertices. In addition, we'll have weight over the edges. So note that weights does not affect in any way uh, the, the time, say, uh, that it takes to the next message. It's just kind of some type of cost or distance in this sense. And the goal will be to compute some function with respect to these weights. So one example will be the MST, uh, the expanding tree. Another one is, say, if you have some root vertex R to compute the shortest path tree, SPT, with respect to this vertex. And as you can see, there's actually some tension between the shortest path metric and the hope metric. So from one hand, we have the shortest path metric uh, with respect to these weights, which is the actual metric we care about in order to perform the computation. And on the other hand, we have the hope metric, which is the one we uh, use to perform the computation. And they might differ a lot. And indeed, Sarma et al. showed that actually even approximating the MST is very hard in this case. So what they show specifically is for every alpha, which is polynomial n, every alpha approximation of the MST will take you at least square root n plus d round, hiding some uh, polygorithmic factors here. This is quite big. For example, computing just a spinning tree will take you only d rounds. That's a big difference. And now there's actually nothing special here about the MST. Uh, the lower bounds also hold for problems like approximating shows ST path, shows path tree, and minimum cut. In addition, there's a meshing upper bounds. So here Elkin show constructed MST in square root n plus d number of rounds, and uh, Becker et al. constructed an approximate SPT, so it's not exactly SPT, but it's almost as good. So for every parameter epsilon and root r, they constructed a shortest a, a 3t, so that for every vertex v, the distance between v to the root is at most one plus epsilon times the original distance in the graph, and the running time is called d plus n. The main focus of this work is graph spanners. Given a weighted graph G, a T spanner of G is a sub graph H that preserves pairwise distances. So, specifically, we want that for every pair of vertices U and V, the distance, the shortest path distance in H, will be at most T times larger than the shortest path distance in the original graph G. So, know that because H is a subgraph, the pairwise distance between every pair of vertices is at least as large as the original distance. And if it's a spanner, this means it's at most T times larger. So, here, for example, the, uh, this entire graph is G, and the red edges is the spanner H, which has some small uh, stretch. Okay, so, so in spanners, we basically study trade-offs between the stretch parameter T and the sparsity of the graph H. In addition, today, we'll talk about another parameter called lightness, which is the ratio between the weight of the spanner to the weight of the MST. So the weight of the spanner is simply the sum of all the weights of all the edges in the spanner, and the MST is the MST, but not in a sense, the MST is the minimal possible spanner. So if your graph, if your spanner is, doesn't even have the weight of the MST, then your spanner is not connected, and therefore the stretch is infinite, so it's that. So in, a sense, in this sense, MST is the minimal, and lightness measure how much more than the minimal the weight of your uh, spanner is. Yeah, so this is not the parameter we care about. So previous results are the following. So for every parameter K, Alpha for et al. show that one can construct a 2k minus 1 spanner uh, with uh, n to the 1 plus 1 over k edges, which is believed to be tight up to other scarce conjecture. Uh, Cheshik and uh, Wolfielsen, improving over previous results, uh, constructed a 2k minus 1 times 1 plus epsilon spanner with the same number of edges and lightness n to the 1 over k. So this is nice. Uh, so, natural question is what about the congest model? These uh, spanners are quite useful. Uh, the Swanet Sand showed constructed a 2K minus 1 spanner 
with number of edges k times n to the one plus one over k. So now it's k times larger than uh, other fertile, but they constructed this spanner in uh, order k congestrons, which is very fast. And our contribution is construction of flight spanners in the congest model. Uh, so specifically, we showed that uh, one can construct a 2k minus 1 times 1 plus epsilon spanner uh, with number of, uh, with lightness uh, k times n to the 1 over k. So this is the same as Cheshire Gross Nielsen times k. And the uh, number of edges is the same as Bissonasan in n to the 1 over, it was essentially square root n plus d. And we have this additional n to the 1 over 4k plus 2 uh, parameter here, uh, which uh, we'll be happy to shape. However, now this is quite close to being tight. As by uh, Sarman et al., uh, one must use at least square root n plus d rounds because this spanner is light, so it's approximated the MST. Yeah, so up to this factor, this is tight. Next, we study shallow light trees, or SLT. So recall that given a root vertex r, an SPT, shortest path tree, the tree t, such that for every vertex v, the distance between r and v and t equal to the distance in the original graph, like here. The SLT is some compromise between MST and SPT. So specifically, we want both to approximate distances to a root and to be light. So formally, we say that the tree is an alpha beta SLT if it has lightness that's most beta, and for every vertex v, the distance between the root r to v is at most alpha times the original distance. So this, 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 uh, this orange tree here, and note that if we compare this kind of purple edges or edges in the SPT, which not as SLT, to assess what we, it's doing, it's kind of making some shortcuts here, such that it will be lighter and the distance will be not much larger. So what is known about SLTs? So Cooler et al. constructed, and for every parameter epsilon, constructed in 1 plus epsilon, uh, 1 plus 2 epsilon SLT. So now there's inverse relationship between stretch to lightness. This is also known to be tight. And our contribution is construction in the congest model. So we, for every parameter epsilon, constructed in 1 plus epsilon, 1 plus order 1 over epsilon SLT. This is like almost tight up to this kind of constant here. And the number from it took us is square root n plus d. And know that because it's actually giving you a very good approximation to the MST, by Sarman et al. lower bound, this is the best possible. Next, we study doubling metrics. We say that metric space is doubling dimension d if every ball of radius r can be covered by at most 2 to the d balls of half the radius. So here we have this red ball so radius r and covered by eight balls of half the radius. So for example, every d-dimensional Euclidean space has doubling dimension asymptotically d. In this work, we talk about graphs. So we know that we say that the graph has doubling dimension d if the corresponding choice path metric has doubling dimension d. Uh, okay, so what about spanners, of course? So board line improving previous works show that uh, for every parameter epsilon, one can construct one plus epsilon spanner with lightness epsilon to the minus d and epsilon to the minus d times n number of edges. And uh, this is tight. And our contribution is the construction of such a spanner in the congest model. So specifically, we construct the spanner with the same parameters plus this additional log n factors in both lightness and number of edges. And it took us a uh, squared n plus d uh, up to certain lower terms, number of rounds. However, interestingly here, uh, the lower bound of Sarban et al does not apply because their instance had quite large doubling dimension. So it's actually possible to improve it, maybe. In order to construct spanners for doubling metrics, we used nets. Net is a very basic combinatorial structure, which might be useful for many other words in weighted graphs. And therefore, the rest of the talk will be actually devoted to the construction of these nets. A set N is a gamma beta net if it will fulfill the following two properties. So in this picture here, the red points represent the net. So first, we would like the net to be gamma covering. That is, for every vertex V, there will be a net point at distance at least most gamma, like here. And secondly, we want the set to be beta separating. This for every two net points u and v, the distance between them will be at most beta. So previously, people studying mainly k ruling set, which is simply a special case where g is unweighted, and the special case of a net 
and uh, where g is unweighted, and gamma equals to beta equals to k. And note that if k equals to one, this is simply a maximal independent set. Uh, Luby, in his work, showed that uh, one can construct a k ruling set in k log n runs in the congest model. And our contribution is the construction of nets for weighted graphs. So we showed that for every two parameters, beta and gamma fixed, where gamma is between beta and two beta, one can construct a gamma beta net in square n plus d rounds uh, up to some second order terms. And note that uh, this problem can be reduced actually to MST, and therefore there's also a lower bound. So for every uh, polynomial parameter alpha, every algorithm that construct gamma delta, delta net for every parameter delta, will take at least skirt n plus d rounds. So here is our algorithm, which is inspired by the MIS algorithms of Tier et al. and Luby. And we start with uh, two sets A and N. So A would be the set of active vertices, initially it's all the vertices, and L, N will be the net that will return eventually to initially is empty. The algorithm will work in bounds, and each round initially we sample permutation pi over the set of active vertices. So initially and all the vertices are active, so here's the permutation. And now every vertex performs the following test. Uh, if it uh, has, uh, it's the first with respect to the permutation in its entire neighborhood of radius beta, then it will join the net. So in this uh, example here, the only two vertices that will join the net is one and three, because any other vertex has some vertex in its beta neighborhood that exceeds it, exceeds it in the permutation pi. Okay, but now, uh, so this is kind of ends this, and now every vertex which has a net point at this most gamma will cease to be active. So this is like all the gray vertices here. Now we'll start a new round of computation with respect to only the active vertices. So here's another permutation. So these two vertices join the net, all these vertices cease to be active, and then and the second round, then in the third round, example another permutation, these vertices become a net point, all these vertices cease to be active, and now all the vertices cease to be active, so we have these red points as a net. This is what we'll return. So it's clearly uh, you see that n is actually a gamma beta net. Uh, the question is, will it stop or how fast this process will stop? And uh, one can show this with high probability, this process will terminate in log n rounds of this type, so this is quite efficient. Uh, and then what we meant to show is actually how to implement this algorithm in the congest model. The main tool we'll be using to implement our algorithm is list element list or LE list. So here we're given some permutation pi and the LE list of vertex V with respect to the graph G and permutation pi is a set of pairs of vertex and the distance between the vertex to V and the vertex U will belong to the LE list of V if in the smallest ball around V containing U, uh, U is the minimum with respect to pi. Or in other words, if there is no vertex W, that both closer to V than u and exceeds u in the permutation pi. So for example, consider this vertex v here with this red permutation pi. So the uh, list elements list of v will be as follows. So first v of course will contain itself, a distance zero because no vertex is closer than v than v itself. Next, it will contain this vertex a because it, uh, the ball of radius two around v a is the minimal. Then it will contain this vertex B, because this is the minimal distance four. Next, it will contain the vertex C, which is the minimal at distance five on V. And finally, it will contain the distance D, which is the minimal at distance eight. And know that once you contain the vertex, which is the first in the permutation, it will not contain any other vertex. Okay, so this is the LEDs. So uh, as Kant all showed with high probability on the permutation pi, uh, for every vertex v, the length of the LE list will be at most logarithmic. And uh, interestingly, Fredericks and Lenzen uh, show how to construct this list uh, efficiently in the congestion model. So specifically, uh, they show that for every delta, uh, one can construct in squared n plus d a number of rounds times these second order terms. Uh, we show the algorithm this number of rounds, samples a permutation pi, 
and computes an LE list uh, for every vertex V with uh, respect to this permutation pi and some graph H. So actually what we want is to, to be with respect to the graph G, but they construct it with respect to the graph H with kind of closely approximates the graph G. So here the graphs H uh, is a graph that uh, for which, for every pair of vertices, the distance between U and V is at most one plus delta, the original distance. Uh, so we actually will neglect this fact uh, for the rest of the talk. So now let me show you how we can use this LE list in order to implement our algorithm in the congest model. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, for the example, we'll fix gamma equal to beta equal to three. So actually we need some difference between them, but yeah, let's neglect it for now. Uh, yes, yeah, so we run the algorithm using this LE list. And now, uh, now we call it now, each vertex V needs to decide whether it should add join the net or not. And the test it performs, it's whether in the permutation pi is the first vertex in the entire a uh, ball around it of radius beta, which is three here. So uh, consider this vertex V. And now it looks on its LE list, which is new, known. And uh, using this list, it can decide whether there's a vertex which exceeds its representation pi in the first, uh, in this ball of radius three. So here, this is kind of the ball. And it can see that at distance two, there's a vertex A, uh, which exceeds it in the permutation, and therefore it's now. Uh, that it should not join the net. Another example is this uh, vertex Q here, and it also knows its uh, LE list, uh, which contains only itself and this uh, vertex D, a distance four. It's care only about vertices in distance three. And here the list is empty, like it contains only Q, and therefore Q knows it's the first, and hence it should join the net. Great, and eventually all the vertices could perform locally this test and uh, after the first round only Q and D will join the net. And next we should uh, perform this kind of cleanup step and uh, where every vertex which contain, uh, which has a net point at distance most gamma should cease to be active. And this step will be performed using the Becker et al approximate SPT algorithm. So specifically we simply construct a choice petri with the net points as the root and in this way each vertex could know at least approximately the distance of itself to a net. And if it's closer than gamma, then it ceases to be active. Now we have these two tools. We can simply run this algorithm. And we call it the result. It will be simply a construction of gamma beta net in a square root n plus d times second order terms, number of rounds. Let me wrap up and mention some open questions. So our first result was the construction of a light spanner uh, with these parameters here. And the natural open question is to remove uh, the redundant factors here. So first is this one over four k plus two factor in the number of rounds, which will be nice to remove. And in addition, it will be nice to remove these k factors here, which we know how to construct better uh, sequentially. Uh, I think the most interesting particular case here is the following. It will be nice to construct a log n Spanner with constant lightness. And note that currently uh, the lightness, if you plug in here, log n will be log n. And it would be nice to get a constant. Uh, second, uh, we construct an uh, shell light tree SLT with uh, 1 plus epsilon 1 plus order 1 over epsilon SLT. So this is tight in the sense of the number of rounds. Uh, however, it would be nice to remove this constant here and put it to be a 2. And finally, uh, regarding this uh, doubling dimension spanners, uh, so it will be nice to remove this log n factors here, so it will be tight. And, but I guess the more interesting question is, uh, isn't actually it's necessary to get this square root n factor here in the number of rounds. So it will be nice either to remove it or to show that it's actually necessary. And the final question I want to mention is this metric TSP. So given an MST, gives you a two approximation for uh, the TST problem. Uh, however, we know by Christophides that it's possible to get three halves. And the question is whether it's possible to uh, reduce this two factor with something smaller in the congest model. So that's it. Thank you for listening.